Hey everyone, welcome to DIY Drone Part 2. If you haven't yet watched part one of this video series, hit the link in the description box and check that one out first. In today's video, I'll be talking about the fundamentals of drone design. I'll give you an outline of the electronics needed and we'll map out a blueprint for the 3D model itself. So let's talk about the electronics. Now I've got a full list of the parts I used in the Holmes Flight drone down in the description box. Uh, for this uh, new frame, I haven't quite decided what I'm going to be using, but we'll figure that out later. You're going to need a flight control so this is the, the brain of the drone it interprets the signal from your radio transmitter and decides what to do with it you need uh, four electronic speed controllers or ESCs uh, there's one for each motor and it determines which way the motor spins and how quickly uh, it's helpful to have a power distribution board it's not essential but it tidies up all your wiring by incorporating all the circuitry into one board and the receiver so that's pretty obvious it receives the signal from your transmitter and sends it on to the flight controller the motors it's pretty self-explanatory too so a motor for each arm uh, on a quadcopter you've got four of them and it spins a propeller and then the battery so this is a lithium polymer battery usually or a lipo and it comes in a variety of voltages and capacitors so that's everything and for an fpv setup you need to add a camera a video transmitter and the optional on-screen display so as as technology advances we're seeing a rise in combined components such as a flight controller receiver combo and a 4-in-1 ESC and all of that sort of thing which it really minimizes the amount of components in your build and it's also cheaper for the consumer. So let's move on to the frame design, okay? There's a few things you need to consider. Now, I'm going to be printing this on my Prusa i3 Mark II, which I haven't actually got yet. It's coming in a couple of weeks and I'll be using PLA. For my CAD software, I'm using Fusion 360 by AutoCAD uh, after switching from SolidWorks. And for slicing software, I'm using Cura. For printer operations, I'm using Matter Control. Now, before I begin working on any 3D design, I rough out a few sketches first for my concepts, and I use those as references for the form and the overall size and shape of the drone. The main factors that you'll need to consider right at this stage are the overall size and the shape. So there's a few standard sizes uh, that are very common at the moment, such as the 250mm mini quad, and then also there's a 180, 210 sort of class that is coming, uh, becoming more popular too. And the frame is measured diagonally from one motor shaft to the opposite. Uh, another factor you'll need to consider now is the size of your physical printing bed. So obviously you'll be limited by that and whether you're going to go with a unibody or multibody design which we'll talk about now. For this I'm going to be using a 210mm frame uh, and it's going to be a one piece or a two piece design. Oh and the last thing to consider uh, is the kind of propellers that you want to be using. So in general you can fit uh, three inch propellers on a 180 frame. 4 inch on a 210 and, and I think up to 6 inch propellers on a 250 millimeter frame. There are exceptions to the rule but that's the general starting point. As for the shape of it, there's little difference in performance. Uh, I personally like the X and the H formats. Uh, the plus is a little bit strange to me, uh, also it's not very good for FPV because you'll have a motor a propeller right in front of your camera. So uni or multi-body. A uh, multi-body frame is going to be easier to repair, it means that if you break an arm you can replace just the arm, uh, but it also sacrifices a little bit of strength because where your components join you need to have an overlap or in the case of Holmes Flight a sandwich. Uh, just to kind of offset the lack of strength. On the other side of it, a uh, unibody frame is a lot stronger in general, but if you damage an arm or if you need to reprint the frame, it's gonna take you a lot longer than just reprinting the specific component you need. And so on that note, let's talk about the strength. So drones like these are designed to be flown very fast and inevitably they will crash. So it needs to be quite, so it needs to be very sturdy and having any thin components or sections with lots of cutouts is just asking for trouble. When you think ahead to the 3D printing process itself, you're going to be using three walls minimum and at least 20% infill. The drone should definitely have a flat bottom. Uh, you can get around this by printing with a raft and support material, but it's really not worth the hassle. And using a flat bottom means you'll get the best bed adhesion and you'll just, it'll be a lot easier, trust me. It does mean that you'll need to print the landing gear separately and attach those afterwards, such as on the home's flight frame. 
To reduce the amount of material that you're using in the print time and to reduce weight, you can use cutouts. So an example of this is on the upper plate of the Homes Flight drone, I used a double layer cutout and triangulation to offset the, uh, the strength reduction and it ended up saving me a lot of time printing and it uses a lot less material. So what about the overall aesthetic of the frame? It's really up to you. For the Homes Flight frame, I mimicked that popular split plate design. We have the upper and lower plates separated by standoffs to enclose the electronics. And that works really well for beginners because it's easy to install the electronics. For this new frame, I want to create something that's fully enclosed, i.e. weatherproof. And so therefore I'm gonna have one piece bottom frame with a pod type enclosure, which uh, kind of covers all the electronics. So you'll need to have enough room inside the frame to fit all of your electronics. So don't forget to consider the height of the boards, the mounting pattern, uh, leaving room for the headers or connector pins, the length or arrangement of the antennas. And of course you need to be able to access all of your mounting bolts and screws. There are probably a few more factors that uh, we need to think about and we'll come across those as we go through the design process. If you're unsure at this stage which components you'll be using, just copy me and it's easy enough to make changes later on down the track. The tolerances for all of your holes and mounting points, uh, this will depend on the printer you're using and how well it is calibrated. Personally, I use 0.2 millimeter tolerances for everything and it works a treat. All of the holes I will be drilling out post print anyway. And last of all, make sure you experiment. You are definitely not gonna get it right the first time. That's the beauty of 3D printing slash rapid prototyping is that you can iterate, 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 iterate quickly, cheaply, and easily. Right now it's design time. So open up the CAD software of your choice. So we're gonna get started with a digital blueprint of the design itself. And I actually find it really useful to export this as a 2D illustration to Adobe Illustrator and I'll print a physical copy. Therefore I can lay out the components and I can make notes and draw sketches all at a one-to-one -one scale. So on the Z plane, I'm going to start with a couple of center lines here. Those will come in handy later because it is going to be uh, symmetrical in one axis, which means that we only have to draw half of it and mirror that afterwards. And since I'm going with a 210mm frame, I need to draw out a square, which is 148.5 millimeters on each side. And I just worked that out using some basic maths. This will mean that each corner of the square is a center of a motor shaft. At this stage you can also decide on the angle of the arms, so I'm going to go with 45 degrees like a true X-frame. However on the Holmes Flight drone I had 30 degree arms at the front and 10 at the rear, uh, which made it more of an X slash H-frame hybrid. This is probably the most difficult part and it's the motor mounting hole pattern. Uh, it depends on the motors that you're using, so 1800 series motors use a 16 by 12 m 2 millimeter mounting pattern and the 2200 series motors use a 16 by 19 m 3 mil pattern. I'm using the larger 2200 series motors, so all I need to do is start with a 4 millimeter diameter hole on one corner of that square. That's going to be the cutout for the motor shaft. Uh, and from there I'm just going to map out a 16mm and a 19mm diameter construction circle just as a reference. And another thing is the orientation of these slots will depend on the motors you're using as well. Most 2200 series motors have the wiring coming out between two mounting holes. However the 1800 motors have, them, have the wiring coming out in line with a hole. So this is crucial because we want the wiring to come out in line with the center of the arm. Uh, if you're using 45 degree arms and 2200 series motors, your mounting slots will be at 0, 90, 270 and 180. Yeah, 0, 90, 180 and 270 degrees. Uh, I'll show you now how to work it out if you're using a custom angle. You basically, all you need to do is draw a line perpendicular to the arm center line and from there you can offset that line by 45 degrees and that's your angle for the slot. And the easiest way to draw these slots is using the slot tool. So you draw your first one, uh, make sure that it's 3.4 millimeters wide to account for that 0.2 millimeter tolerance for the M3 screws. And you can use the rotate tool to finish the mounting pattern with four instances. Now it's time to mock up the propeller diameter which is essential to finding the maximum width of your frame. So the four inch propellers that I'll be using have a radius of 50.8 millimeters. 
So I'm going to draw out a circle uh, from the center of that motor shaft and that will basically allow me to visualize how much room I have for my frame. Uh, if we're including a minimum buffer of 5mm say, that gives us a maximum frame width of 46.9mm. Now all I need to do is use the mirror tool to mirror that entire assembly from that one corner down to the bottom and then across to the other side and we've got, our, and we've got all four of our motor mounting points done. I'll just quickly put a reference uh, in the centre of the frame for the flight controller mount. So it's just going to be the standard mounting pattern of 30.5mm and we'll make some adjustments to that later on. So now we have the basic blueprint for our drone design. Uh, pretty simple so far. In part 3 I will begin to build up the form of this bottom plate and we will refine the design a little bit more. Uh, and then it's going to be on to a test print to fit the electronics before I finish designing the enclosure to go over the top. I'll also have to decide how that's going to clip together. Uh, it's probably going to be cable ties, but I might try and integrate a 3D printed clip system. So I hope you've all learned something today and I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, make sure that you subscribe and leave a like if you did. Uh, also leave a comment below letting me know what you liked about the video or what I can improve for next time. Uh, if there's anything you want me to cover in greater detail, let me know. Uh, until then, thanks everyone for watching. See you later.